One of my fondest memories as a child was the time my parents and I piled in our VW 412 station wagon and took a day trip to the Bronx Zoo. I was maybe five or six at the time. You see, my father grew up in the Bronx before joining the Navy at the age of 18 and had been to the zoo many times. He always told me how nice it was, so we went. He was stationed at Andrews Air Force Base at that time, and it was about a four-hour drive, well, three and a half the way my father drove. If I remember correctly, we left at about six in the morning and arrived about ten, right before it opened. That was my first time ever going to a zoo, and he was right. It was amazing seeing all the animals. The lions, the tigers, the bears. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Li <clears throat> Sorry about that. Anyway, after we returned home, I was still in awe of what I had seen at the zoo. So much so that I asked my dad if I could decorate my room in zoo animals. He agreed and told me about a TV show called Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. It's a show that featured video footage of safari animals in their natural habitat. The first time I watched it, I was completely hooked. My father used to let me stay up late on Friday nights to watch it, as I didn't have school the next day. Anyway, my entire room was soon filled with animal decor. You know, a lion comforter on my bed, elephant lamp on my desk, a giraffe rug on the floor. You get the idea, right? Now, given the fact that my father was in the Navy, we moved around a lot. Any Navy brat such as I would know exactly what I'm talking about. My parents and I moved around so much that I went to 13 different schools in 8 years. That was until my father retired from the Navy when I was 12. Every single place that we moved to, I always decorated my room with animal decor and would bug the hell out of my parents until we went to the zoo. Some were close by, while others were sometimes an hour away or more. Anyway, once my father retired, we moved to a small town in Delaware. That's where I went to high school, got my driver's license, bought my first car, kissed my first girl, all that good stuff. I also went to the Salisbury Zoo every chance I got. It was a small zoo about 45 minutes away from where we live, with not too many animals, but it was still a zoo. You see, I worked at an automotive parts warehouse through high school, and that's how I got all the money for gas, but it wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. Anyway, after I graduated, I decided I wanted to have a career that dealt with animals. So, I got a job working at well, due to legal issues, I can't tell you the name of the place. I'll just say that the people who work there are very smart when it comes to pets. I quit the warehouse the same day. Anyway, I love that job. Dealing with cats and dogs and other domesticated animals all day was great. My dream job was to work at a zoo, taking care of those animals. But I was never a big fan of school. And you had to have all kinds of degrees and education to work at a zoo. And I didn't want to go through all that. Now, I worked at the store for about four years. And when it was announced that the company would be opening 17 new stores in and around the continental United States. And was looking for present employees to work at these stores. I volunteered right away. Now, anyone that lives in Delaware knows that there's not much to do there. It's really quite boring at times. Anyway, I just turned 23 and I figured it was about time that I moved out of my parents' place and made a life of my own somewhere. I applied for a position at the store they were building a few states away and got it. Anyway, a week or so before the store was scheduled to open, I closed out my savings account, packed all my stuff, which wasn't much, put it all in my car, kissed my mom goodbye, shook my dad's hand, got in my car and drove there. I was scheduled to work the next day. When I got close to where I was going, I saw a billboard sign that read, The New Breed Zoo opening soon, 3.4 miles from here, with pictures of zoo animals on it. Cool, I thought. I'll be there opening day. In retrospect, 
the name should have been a red flag, but at the time, all I saw was the word zoo. Anyway, I rolled into town, found the store, and then went to go and find a place to stay. I ended up renting an above-the-garage apartment from a nice lady named Stacy who worked at a law firm in town. I unpacked the car and moved in. Water, electric, and cable were all included in the rent, so all I had to do was buy food. I passed a grocery store by the name of Barnaby's on the way into town, so I decided to go there. That place was creepy as hell. It had a really bad vibe, so I just got what I needed and left as fast as I could. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> I'm getting way off track here. None of this is relevant to this story. Okay, moving on. Anyway, I had planned on being there at the zoo on opening day, but it didn't work out that way. Given the fact that the store was a brand new store, the store manager had us working 13 days straight to get set up for the store's grand opening. I wasn't able to get to the zoo until about a week and a half after it opened, my first day off. I looked up the zoo on Google Maps and followed the directions it gave me to get there. I arrived a little bit before 8 a.m. and waited in line for it to open. Ahead of me in line was a guy wearing an Iron Maiden shirt and blue jeans. As I am an Iron Maiden fan myself, I mentioned that I like his shirt, and then we had a small conversation about which album was the best. He said the number of the beast, while I said peace of mind. Anyway, the zoo then opened. I walked up to the ticket booth and paid my $19.99, got my hand stamped, and a little blue raffle ticket. What is this for? I asked the girl. She was blonde, cute, and a little chubby. Oh, every two hours someone will announce a series of four-digit numbers. If one of those numbers match the last four numbers on your ticket, then you get an advanced look at all the new animals and the new exhibits that the zoo will be offering before anyone else does, she said smiling. Oh, okay, cool, I replied. Good luck, she said. Thanks, I answered, taking the ticket and walking in. It was a big zoo with free roaming animals and large open areas surrounded by huge iron fences. They could walk right up to it if they wanted to. It was great. I actually got to pet a zebra. I was so excited. Anyway, I walked around for a couple hours looking at it and taking pictures of all the animals. When over the PA system, a soft female voice said, Hello everyone and welcome to the New Breed Zoo. Our first group of winning numbers for the day are... I pulled the ticket out of my pocket and held it in my hand and looked at it. The last four numbers on my ticket were 3825. The only reason I remembered it is because it spells out my favorite word. She then read off a series of four digit numbers. Dang, not a winner, I said to myself, putting the ticket back in my pocket. All guests with winning numbers, please report to the guest relations building next to the lion's den on the east side of the zoo. You have 10 minutes to do so. Thank you, she said. Anyway, it was like 95 degrees out that day. With, with the humidity, it made it feel like it was 105. I got a bottle of water from one of the concession stands and sat down on a bench under a tree to drink it. I looked around and realized that the lion's den was on my right, and guest relations was on my left. Now, I'm sure all of you have been to a zoo or an amusement park, basically any business open to the public, and you've seen doors with restricted area, employees only, do not enter, private, written on them, right? Well, on the side of the guest relations building was a door marked, authorized personnel only. Seconds after the announcement was over, an old man with the gray hair stepped out of the door. He had striking resemblance to Doc Brown from Back to the Future. He wore a white doctor's coat with a stethoscope around his neck, black pants, and a pair of black shoes. He held a clipboard in his left hand, his right arm held tightly against his chest. After a closer look, I realized that he didn't have a hand on his right arm. Holy shit, I said to myself. After about 10 minutes of standing there, he began to yell, Anyone with winning tickets, please come this way. He repeated it about five or six times. Small group of people then began to approach him. 
I saw the guy in the Iron Maiden t-shirt walk up to him, as well as a soccer mom, a big biker guy, and a suit monkey looking guy. But you don't care about that, do you? Anyway, a few others walked up as well. The old man greeted them with a smile, took their tickets, and motioned for them to enter the door. They all entered one by one. When the last person entered, the old man looked left and right. I assumed to see if anyone else was watching, which was odd. If they're supposed to be going down there, then why would the old man be looking around? I thought something's not right. He turned his head back around and saw me staring at him. He smiled, nodded his head, waved, then hurried through the door, pulling it shut behind him. But it didn't shut all the way. From where I was sitting, I could see that the door was slightly open. Now, being the curious guy that I am, I finished my water, put the cap on the bottle, stood up, threw the bottle in the trash can right beside me, and walked to the door. I then looked around to see if anyone was watching. I opened the door quickly and stepped inside, shutting the door tightly behind me. The smell of old dirt, musty water, and vomit all mixed together then filled my nose. I almost puked myself. I covered my mouth and my nose with my shirt. Anyway, a dimly lit light shone from above. I soon discovered that I was standing on a black metal platform with a black spiral staircase leading down into complete darkness. What the hell? I said to myself. I could hear the coughing and moaning sounds of the people that just walked through the door coming from the darkness below. Okay, I said to myself, let's see what the hell is going on here. I grabbed the railing and began walking down the stairs, trying to be as quiet as I possibly could. I walked and walked down the stairs, the dim light giving way to darkness for what felt like an eternity. I then heard a door creak open as a ray of bright white light shot up from below. I then realized I was only about halfway down the stairs. I saw all the people and the old man walk through the door and watched it close behind him. I was back in complete darkness. Screw this, I said to myself as I reached in my pocket, pulled out my cell phone, put in my passcode and turned on the flashlight. I finally saw where the smell was coming from. I shined my light against the walls. There were no walls, only exposed dirt with streams of water flowing down them. I shined my light downward to see a giant pool of fungus-infested water gathered at the bottom, almost reaching the door. I swear I saw something huge swimming in it. I went from intrigued to scared shitless in one split second. What the hell was that? I screamed and quickly covered my mouth, praying that no one heard me. I quickly darted down the stairs, almost falling a few times. I got to the door and yanked it open, stepped inside, and easily shut the door behind me. I turned off the light on my phone and put it back in my pocket. I was now in a long gray corridor with what looked like water pipes on the ceiling, very dim lights on the walls, and a white door at the very end of it. What the hell is this place? I mumbled to myself. I could barely see the group of people at the other end of the corridor. I then began walking down it slowly, almost tiptoeing. On either side of the corridor were little rooms, well, more like cages with iron bars for doors, like a prison cell. In each cell was a pile of what I can only assume were wood shavings and hay. This must be where they kept the new animals, I thought. Suddenly, I heard screams and the sounds of a struggle coming from down the corridor. I turned my head to see two large men dressed in black pushing the group of people into a cell and slamming the metal door. The old man and the men then exited through the white door and shut it behind them. I ran down the corridor as fast as I could to the last cell on the right. I looked through the bars to see all the people that just came down, laying face down in the piles. Hey, wake up! What the hell? Wake up! I screamed, pulling on the door repeatedly. I heard a door open, then felt someone grab me from behind 
and slammed me hard face first into the bars. I felt a sharp pain stabbing in my neck, followed by an intense burning sensation. Son of a... I slurred and then passed out. I awoke to the sound of that old children's nursery rhyme, We're Going to the Zoo. I loved that song when I was a kid. I played it over and over and over again, drove my parents crazy with it. Anyway, I heard the song playing and I smiled. My happiness turned to terror when I opened my eyes and tried to move. I saw a blanket of darkness in front of me. I soon realized that I was strapped down to a surgical table at a 45 degree angle with my arms extended. My legs, my arms, my torso, and my head were strapped down tight. I screamed like a crazy man. Oh, you're awake. How nice, the old man said, standing in front of an old dirty table directly in front of me with his back turned to me. The song played on. Who are you? I screamed. He laughed and said, I'm Dr. Ivan watching you. He laughed and said, I'm Dr. Ivan watching you. Yes, I know how that sounds. Then he laughed once again. What are you doing? Let me go. I yelled and thrashed my body all about. The old man then turned around, holding the largest knife I have ever seen. Oh, come now. That's not an option. I can't allow anyone to leave and possibly ruin all of my good work by informing the authorities. He then walked up beside me. Good work, I inquired. Oh, yes, he said. Let me show you. He then walked over to the wall, placing the knife back on the table and put his hand on the light switch. Let me introduce you to my humanimals, he said, flipping the switch. The darkness that stood before me then began to light up from a large fluorescent light fixtures dangling from the ceiling. What I saw in that room behind that sheet of glass terrified me to my core. I screamed like I've never screamed before in absolute horror. The entire room was filled with these, these creatures. No, not creatures, humanimals. Their bodies were of animals, elephants, alligators, lions, etc., walking around with human heads, old man heads, pretty blonde heads, men's heads, women heads, and old heads. It was horrifying. But if that wasn't bad enough, there were also human bodies, men, women, and teenagers walking around with animal heads, deer heads, sheep heads, llama heads, and many more. I couldn't stop screaming. Through my screams, I saw a panel in the ceiling of the room open up and several mutilated bodies fell to the floor. The humanimals, all of them, then rushed toward the bodies, ripping and tearing them apart. Blood was everywhere. I think you've seen enough, Ivan said, turning off the light. Calm down, calm down, he said, patting me on the shoulder. I slowly began to regain my composure. What in the hell were those things? I asked hastily. Like I said, those were my humanimals. Part human, part animal, he responded. Is that what you're going to do to me and that group of people in the cell? I asked. I'm not quite sure. That all depends on how they do on the test, he answered. What test? I asked, a little calmer. He then walked over to the table and pressed the stop button on the tape deck. The song then stopped playing. He walked back to me and said, Well, it's what I call a common sense test. You see, most people nowadays lack common sense. They're always doing stupid things, making bad decisions that get them hurt or cause injuries to others. Or they're just plain stupid, like believing that a zoo would keep new animals and exhibits underground in this godforsaken cesspool. How stupid is that, he said. Most people fail and are turned into my little creations, but some of them pass and are given a choice. Screw you and screw your stupid test. Let me out of here, I screamed. Easy, easy, easy there, he replied, tapping my shoulder once again. You've already passed. How, I asked. Well, you're obviously an intelligent man, 
How else would you have gotten all the way down here without a ticket? I applaud you, he stated, clapping his hands. Now, I only sedated you and restrained you so we could talk. Talk about what? I questioned. Your choice, he answered. Now, even though you passed, you could still resist to be part of my experiment, for which I would have to kill you and feed you to my children. Or you can agree to be part of my experiment and come work for me in this zoo. You would have to sign a non-disclosure agreement before doing so, of course. All my employees have agreed to work for me. The bodies used for food are the ones who passed but still resisted. And the ones who failed became, well, you know. So what will it be? He asked. Hold on, it's time to open. Hi, welcome to the New Breed Zoo. One, that'll be nineteen ninety nine, please. Out of twenty, here's your change and your receipt. Which hand would you like stamped? There you go. Have a good time. Oh, hey, don't forget your raffle ticket. We have such wonderful things to show you. Good luck. You obviously know what my choice was, right? I mean, I always wanted to work at a zoo, and now I am. Dreams really do come true. Oh, in case you're wondering, the guy in the Iron Maiden shirt now works the kids' petting zoo. His name's Jamie. We hang out from time to time. The cute blonde chubby girl and I started dating. Her name's Michelle, by the way. I really like her. The big biker guy is now in charge of security. The suit monkey guy, he's now half baboon. Seems fitting, right? The soccer mom now works guest relations. I don't know what happened to the other people. I never saw them again. Ivan isn't really a bad guy, aside from his mad scientist stuff. He pays us well, above minimum wage, gives us free entry to the zoo, and shows us all his new human animals, if we want to, of course. All the animals used in the experiment have life-threatening injuries, or very sick and close to dying, so Ivan gives them a chance at life, according to him. No animals are killed just because. Well, here comes another visitor. I gotta go. Don't forget to stop by and see us sometimes. Have a great day, y'all. Hi, welcome to the New Breed Zoo.